You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. The options market can be a confusing place. Sorting through the daily avalanche of data, alerts, updates, articles, and analysis to find the most important information is an overwhelming prospect. But now you have help. Welcome to the Options News Rundown, the only program that breaks through the noise to bring you the most important news and information from the world of options. Every day, we bring you the top five option stories curated by the options experts at theoptionsinsider.com, the premier source for options information. The Options News Rundown is brought to you by Market Taker Mentoring, the leader in options trading education. Get trader education, daily trade ideas, and more with a free one-week trial of Market Taker Mentoring's Live Advantage Group coaching class by visiting markettaker.com slash insider. And now it's time to break through the noise. It's time for your Options News Rundown. Good morning. Today is Monday, March 4th, 2019. This is your Options News Rundown. I'm Dan Passarelli. Our first story today is from investing.com and it's the top five things to know in the market on Monday. First thing to know is US and China are nearing a trade deal. With little data on the economic calendar, markets will likely focus heavily on trade related headlines following reports the U.S. and China were close to striking a deal to end a bitter year-long trade dispute. U.S. President Donald Trump and Chinese President Xi Jinping could seal a formal deal at a trade summit around March 27, given progress in talks between the two countries, the Wall Street Journal reported on Sunday. The two countries appear close to a deal that would roll back U.S. tariffs on at least $200 billion worth of Chinese goods while Beijing pledges, uh, makes pledges on structural economic changes and eliminates retaliatory tariffs on U.S. goods. The second thing to know today is Trump complains about the stronger dollar. President Donald Trump renewed criticism of the Federal Reserve and said the U.S. central bank's tight monetary policy was contributing to a strong dollar and hurting the United States' competitiveness. We have a gentleman that likes a very strong dollar at the Fed, Trump said at the annual Conservative Political Action Conference in Oxton Hill, Maryland on Sunday. I want a strong dollar, but I want a dollar that's great for our country, not a dollar that's so strong that it's prohibitive for us to be dealing with other nations. Trump has repeatedly criticized the Fed and its chairman, Jeremy Powell, whom he appointed for raising interest rates. The U.S. dollar index was a little changed at 96.46 after hitting its highest in around a week at 96.52 earlier. The third thing to know today is U.S. futures pointed to a higher open pre-open before turning around. Uh, elsewhere, European stocks were mostly higher with the pan-regional stock 600 index hovering around levels not seen since the beginning of October. Earlier, markets in Asia started off trading the week on a robust note, with Chinese stocks rallying to their best level since June of 2018. The fourth thing to know today is oil prices gain on signs of slowing U.S. output. In commodities, oil prices edged higher after data showed U.S. energy firms last week cut the number of drilling rigs to the lowest in almost nine months suggesting early signs of moderating domestic production growth. Crude futures were also generally supported by hopes that the U.S. and China would soon resolve their trade disputes, which have dragged on global economic growth. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures rose 55 cents or around 1% to $56.34 a barrel, while international Brent crude oil futures we're at $65.83 per barrel, that's up 76 cents, or about 1.2%. The fifth thing to know today is it's less than a month to go until Brexit. With less than a month to go until Britain is due to leave the European Union, 
The odds of a delay to the March 29th deadline are shortening. Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadkar reportedly told colleagues in his cabinet that a delay to June was very likely, according to Ireland's Sunday Independent, who cited an unnamed minister. A motion in the UK Parliament due to be debated next week also opens the door for essentially a technical delay of a couple months. But it's still not clear whether the EU would agree to that, as ministers in France, Spain, and Germany have all pushed back against the idea. In the meantime, British Prime Minister Theresa May will set out plans for a £1.6 billion fund, which is about $2.1 billion, to help boost economic growth and Brexit supporting communities. May, whose exit deal with Brussels was rejected by a large majority of lawmakers in January, was, has promised Parliament will get to vote on a revised deal by March 12th. Our second story today is from CME.com. CME Group averaged 19 million contracts per day in February of 2019. The world's CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse derivatives marketplace, reached average daily volume of 19 million contracts in February of 2019. This is up 7% from January, from January 2019, but down from a record 27.3 million contracts per day in February 2018. Open interest at the end of February was 126 million contracts, up 3% from January 2019, but down 3% from February 2018. Our third story today is from bnnbloomberg.ca. JP Morgan pulls crop brokers from Chicago options trading floor. JP Morgan Chase & Company is pulling its agricultural commodity brokers from the options floor in Chicago amid a shift to electronic trading. The bank will no longer have a floor presence in agricultural options, including corn, soybeans, and wheat, the company confirmed. JP Morgan has six brokers trading farm commodity options on the floor of the Chicago Board Options Exchange, according to people familiar with the matter, who asked not to be identified because they aren't allowed to speak to the media. The decision reflects the continued move to electronic trading. CME Group, the world's largest derivatives exchange, announced in 2015 it was closing floor trading for most futures contracts in Chicago and New York as open outcry in futures trading handled by the Boris has fallen to just 1% of volume. In 2016, the company shut its New York options pits. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is news you can use for today, Monday, March 4th, 2019, your options news rundown. I'm Dan Passarelli, and I would, in, I would like to invite you all to a very special webinar that we're holding this Saturday, March 9th at 10 a.m. Central Time. This webinar is for anyone who trades options or is interested in trading options. It's helpful for beginners, intermediate, or advanced traders. The webinar is titled, How Having a Checklist Can Add 20% to Your Profits. And you can join this complimentary webinar by simply visiting markettaker.com slash list. That's market, like stock market, taker, like you take something, two T's in a row, markettaker.com slash list. And we'll see you on the webinar this coming Saturday. Trade smart. The Options News Rundown is brought to you by Market Taker Mentoring, the leader in options trading education. Get trader education, daily trade ideas, and more with a free one-week trial of Market Taker Mentoring's Live Advantage Group coaching class by visiting markettaker.com slash insider. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the Options Insider or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com.